having me here. Uh, I am Andres. So I, I am a PhD student and I'm going to make a quick presentation about my work that is uh, based on reconstruction of longitudinal shower profiles for the Cherenkov telescope array. So this is the outline of my presentation. I'm going to talk about the method for the reconstruction of the longitudinal profile. And I'm going to show you some preliminary results. First, our scientific motivation is to develop an analysis change that allowed the CTA, the Cherenkov Telescope Array, to be also a cosmic ray experiment by reconstructing the longitudinal shower profile. This is the number of electrons that are produced along the atmosphere. So there are two important observables that are the Nmax related to the energy of the sh air shower and the Xmax which is related to the uh, mass of the primary particle and the Xmax corresponds to the position where the maximum quantity of charged particles are produced. In this work, we are focused on the reconstruction of this observable, the Xmax. And here in the right plot, you can see the importance of this observable, that uh, where is plot the average of this Xmax as a function of the energy. The, and this is important because this observable can tell us how heavy the composition of cosmic rays are. So we also have that uh, the typical function used for the uh, reconstruction of this observable is the geyser helas function. Uh, there are some current methods to measure the Xmax with ground-based observatories, like the likelihood fitting, which is used by the HES telescope. Uh, for example, they have a resolution of 30 grams per centimeter square for energies below one TV. There are also machine learning techniques in the case of the CTA, for example, to reconstruct the energy uh, and another parameter as well. And another te techniques are based on fluorescence light. That is the case of the peer or uh, experiment to reconstruct the full shower profile and they have uh, the best resolution in the order of 15 grams per centimeter square for higher energies. Um, so our goal in this sense is to propose a method to reconstruct the shower profile uh, from the shedding of light and get, and get the X max resolution. <clears throat> this is a artistic design of the shedding of telescope array. Here you can see different kind of telescope of different size that are going to be located in Spain, in Palma, and in Chile, uh, in Paraná, uh, to cover both hemispheres. And CTA will be one of the largest ground-based gamma ray observatory for energies that goes from 20 GV to 300 TV. And the, this, uh, the CTA will have better characteristics than the current generation, like more sensitivity, better angular resolution, and a larger field of view. So in all this is possible because the CTA will have uh, three kind of uh, telescope sizes to cover uh, the, whole, the whole energy range. So the reconstruction of the longitudinal profile is based on how the Cherenkov light is mapped on the uh, camera. So here you can see that the image, uh, the development of the image uh, is given by the lateral long, uh, longitudinal development of the Cherenkov light in the air shower. So th this means that different pixels in the camera represents or cover different altitudes uh, in the air shower. So we also have that the direction of the image is related to the direction of the shower, of the of the, the axis of the air shower. So using that information, we are able to reconstruct the uh, this sharing of photon profile that you can see here. Uh, but first, let me explain how this process work. Uh, so we basically we basically have that the 
the image is detected by the camera of the telescope that is at some position. And we also have the shower core and the shower axis. And using that information, we are able to, to get a plane, as you can see here. And we project all the pixels that are triggered into this plane, and we get <coughs> a bidimensional image uh, like this. And with the vertical axis, uh, so in, in the vertical axis, we have the height and the lateral distance in the horizontal axis. At zero position, we have the shower axis. And as you can see, the pixels with more photons uh, correspond to those regions that are close to the shower axis as we expected. So then uh, we project the content of the pixels in along the vertical axis and we transfer this quantity into atmospheric depth. And we have a uh, sort of this. So this is the sharing of profiles, the number of photons as a function of the depth for uh, different telescopes. And as you can see, the, the, the intensity and the shape of this sharing of profiles depends on the telescope position and the distribution of the sharing of light. So the question is how can how to go from this sharing of profiles to one unique uh, final longitudinal profile that you can see here in the right plot. And the answer is given by the sharing of light angular distribution that is given by this f. So we use a parametricized function that uh, depends on the angle theta, that is the angle around the shower axis. And we can reconstruct the uh, number of electrons that produce those sharing of photons uh, using the uh, sharing of profiles that we have, we have reconstructed before. So some preliminary results that we obtain are based on simulated events. We use the CTA self array configuration. Uh, we use just a telescope of one of one type, uh, medium size telescope. We use 25 of them for two uh, uh, kind of species for proton and nylon events in the energy range from 10 to 300 TV for, for one unique uh, angle of 20 degrees. So this is an example uh, of the reconstructed profiles that corresponds to one event uh, generated by a proton of 11 teraelectron volts. In this plot, you can see the different profiles that are reconstructed by telescope at different distances. Uh, so in principle, we expect that all these profiles are in the same height, but as you can see, uh, there are some of them, for example, this red profile that uh, seems to not belong to the behavior of the other ones. So this means that uh, performing the reconstruction using all available telescopes can result in a noisy measurement. So we need to identify those telescopes that uh, produce the, the best uh, reconstruction of the shower profile. So in order to do that, we uh, apply some quality cuts. The first two are based on the number of trigger telescopes and the number of islands that are in the camera image. These are the uh, cluster of pixels that are formed in the image. Uh, we also take into account the position of the uh, center of the list of the lips of the camera and, and also the telescope uh, position with respect to the shower core. That information you can see here in this plot. So in the vertical axis, we have the, helio, the HELAS radius, which is the position of the center of the lips in the camera. So zero means the center of the camera and 1.2 means the border of the camera. Uh, in the horizontal axis, we have the position of the, of the telescope with that camera. So here we have uh, events for cosmic rays for proton and iron uh, particles, and we also have for gamma ray events. So you can see that uh, in the case of the, <coughs> of the gamma events, uh, we have that uh, well-behaved, uh, we have a well 
behavior. So we, we expect that if you uh, if you have a an, a camera in the shower at the shower core, you are going to have an image in the middle, and then as the telescope is far away, you are, your image is going to be at the border of the camera. So uh, that is not the case for the proton and iron event. As you can see there is a, a spread distribution. So we identify that those images that are in the border of the camera like this produce bad reconstruction events. And the same for the images that are far away from the shower core, as you can see here. So there are some pixels that are outside of the of the ellipse. So uh, here you can see that after applying those uh, quality cuts, we can have some uh, we can get rid of some of those uh, profiles, like the red one. As you can see here, we got rid of this profile by rejecting the telescopes that are far away. At the, in the end, we only have uh, three profiles that you can see here. And using those three profiles, we can get, for example, the average profile uh, from those telescopes. And here you have a well-behaved profile that increase, reach a maximum, and then decrease. Uh, we have adjusted uh, our geyser helix function around the maximum because we only care about this region and we get an X max that is very close to the real one. So finally, uh, we got the resolution of the shower maximum reconstruction for proton and iron events. So the resolution is given by the standard deviation of the difference of the uh, reconstructed and the simulated X max. So as you can see in both cases, we have resolutions in the order of 30 grams per centimeter square and 35 grams per centimeter square in the case of iron events. So it's important uh, to know that we still have some events that have a bad reconstruction uh, the, after the quality cuts and some of these events cause that the distribution uh, to be wider. We also have a small bias uh, of two grams per centimeter square in each case, but with an error of the same uh, magnitude. But in principle, we could say that uh, our distribution is uh, almost centered at zero. So some of the conclusions that we have is that uh, we could have a synergy between the CTA and the cosmic ray experiments uh, that could allow to make a complementary cosmic ray measurements. Uh, we also have a study uh, method to reconstruct the full shower profile using these multiple telescopes for um, the measurement of the uh, cosmic ray observables like the XMAX. And some preliminary results show that uh, for proton and iron events, we have a resolution of 30 grams per centimeter square in, in the first case and 35 in the second case. And when we compare this with previous methods, such as the likelihood fitting, for example, uh, we could say that we don't have competitive results at all, but we still have good results with an alternative method. So that's all. Thank you for your attention.